There's something about complexity in there as well, isn't there? The fact that we're used to dealing with many stranded, uh, you know, voices we can, you know, you with your piano and, and, and accompanying, you're dealing with at least three voices at the same time. And, and equally with me, with whether it's chamber music and playing a string quartet, that's four lines at once, or, or within an orchestral context, thinking of, you know, ten plus lines at the same time. I think there's also something there about embracing complexity. When we make music, it, it is, of course, it's, there's ego involved, but it is more ego-less, I would say, when you're subjugating into a bigger group. It has to be. You can't have an orchestra of soloists. And I, I do think that that's, of course, you also have to be able to be a soloist. Like you have to be able to have lots of different roles and take lots of different roles. And I don't know about you, but I think that's also very useful, whether or not we're hands-on and that's a much more kinesthetic connection and um, much more tactile. But as well, I think we're used to this idea of tactility in space. So whether it's a piano and, and learning distances of being able to play, you know, big chords at one end and then hitting the right place at the other, or, you know, for me with the similar ideas with, with the viola or violin, that we're also, we're used to thinking in three dimensions. Yeah, of course, manage space and manage your body in space in a very precise way. Mm. Of course, looking for perfection again, <laughs> but yeah, I, I, we, what you said about complexity, this rings a bell a lot, I think, but the way we learn ear training, so most people hear, and so, and, um, and if you, when a lay person listen, listens to music, they probably don't get all of the layers of the music at the same time. Mm. So you pay more attention to the melody and then you know that there is something behind it. And as a musician, you learn to really hear different voices at the same time. And it is a skill. Mm. And it is very similar for, for my understanding to, to the skill of awareness. Like the thing that we learn in Feldenkrais, we learn to notice many things at once. We learn to have a bigger picture we get more complex with our uh, skill of awareness, no? Mm. Because everybody has self-awareness to some point, and we're really working on developing it, making mm. it more, more complete, more, more complex. And, and that reminds me of this idea of, of you know, inter, inter, introspection or interception, in fact, where we, we're, we're, we're sensing our internal thoughts, feelings, emotions, and sensations. And then bringing that outwards into, if you like, the ends of our fingers, or if you're a singer, obviously, through the voice. But the, the, that's also something that I think we're already involved with, which is internal world and an external world. And, and going between the two or having them going on at the same time simultaneously. And I think that movement of attention is really important for, for helping people understand the learning process of, of, of something like Feldenkrais, of how we can help people really feel themselves better internally, like recognize what they want, what they're feeling, you know, um, and also how they're interacting in the world around them. Mm -hmm. 